This channel is part of the History Hit Network. Ten famous faces are going on an epic journey. It's 2015, but not for long. They're travelling into the past. This is an historical circus. With no idea where or when they're headed. Wow. Wake up in another place, in another era. Oh my goodness! Exciting. They've been told nothing in advance. Do you know I've got absolutely no idea what we're doing? <laughs> I mean, I've never had a costume fitting, blindfolded. So it's all a total surprise. Oh, wow. They're leaving the 21st century behind to crash land into six different moments in British history. What are we? We're early, early. 1796. Welcome to 1913. Oh, wow. wow. They'll be stripped of their celebrity status. Oh, no, we are. We're servants. Thrust into testing environments. Where's the food? It's coming! Oh, I don't shout. Pulling these things in. Ah! It is really hard work. And thrown to the bottom of the pile. Shut up and listen instead of arguing! Can they survive everything ah! history has to throw at them? Oh, this is bad. <sighs> Calm down, Fern. We'll sunk the boat. Please! You've got to be joking! That's horrific. They are... The Time Crashers. This is Haddon Hall in Derbyshire. 400 years ago, it was one of the greatest manor houses in England. Now, it's about to play host to 10 new visitors. The first is Hollywood actress, Kirsty Alley. Is that a real pig? <laughs> oh, Lord. The idea of living in a period of time that I would never have the opportunity to live in is exciting. We learn things in school, but to live it, that's a whole different thing. A lot of meat, pheasants, rabbits. I don't know when they ate peacocks, but they clearly did. Next, Olympic gold medalist, long jumper, Greg Rutherford. Oh, well. <laughs> that's what the smell was. Dead chickens, which is nice. Hi. Hello. How are we doing? We're good. Good. <laughs> I love history and I've always wanted to travel through time and experience it. Christy. Greg. The opportunity to go and actually live it is hugely exciting. It's taking me completely out of my comfort zone. Joining Kirsty and Greg are actor Charlie Condu. Wow. <laughs> TV presenter Fern Britton. My goodness. Hello. Hey. <laughs> and Commonwealth champion weightlifter Zoe Smith. Are we both servants? It looks like it, doesn't it? I think we probably are. <laughs> the Time Crashers have arrived at an extraordinary moment in English history. The year is 1588. It's the height of Elizabethan England and the country's a powerful trading nation. Luxury goods are coming in from overseas and at home, industries like tin, coal and shipbuilding are booming. The rich are getting richer and building extravagant country residences like this one. The need for domestic servants is exploding. And that is where the Time Crashers come in. Oh, nice. The Time Crashers Guide. <laughs> oh, Here we go. To help the new arrivals settle in, they've been given a guide to Elizabethan life. Ah, welcome to 1588. Queen Elizabeth I, a 55-year-old virgin queen, has been on the throne for 30 years. A virgin queen? Yeah, yes. apparently she's stayed a virgin the entire time. You are all kitchen <laughs> servants. <laughs> you must stay out of sight of his lordship and ladyship and their guests at all times, especially the female kitchen hands who are paid the least. You, put that apple down! I am Master Cook. You are my new kitchen staff. We eat when we are told, and we eat what we are given. That is theft. My lord and lady are returning today. We have a feast and many guests tomorrow. I need you to follow me. Elizabethan feasts were all about showing off. 
Hurry up, ladies, don't dawdle. A feast could cost hundreds of thousands of pounds in today's money and was often weeks in the planning. The kitchen would produce hundreds of dishes and the more flamboyant, expensive and just plain weird each dish was... Oh, man! ..the better. That looks like a pig head. History Hit is a streaming platform that is just for history fans, with fantastic documentaries covering fascinating figures and moments in history from all over the world. With familiar faces such as Dan Jones and Dr. Eleanor Yanega, we've got hundreds of documentaries covering the greatest figures and events of medieval history. We're committed to bringing history fans award-winning documentaries and podcasts that you cannot find anywhere else. Sign up now for a 14-day free trial, and Chronicle fans get 50% off their first three months. Just be sure to use the code CHRONICLE at checkout. While the first time crashers face life as lowly kitchen hands, actor Keith Allen has higher aspirations. I'm just wondering whether some people will be assigned a class role that is at the higher end of the spectrum and some which obviously will affect what they do. I was born to the manor. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, quite. Might even be Lord of the Manor. Joining him? <laughs> Breakfast news anchor Louise Minchin. Oh, wow. What a beautiful room I'm in. Wow, another bedroom. Are, Are you my servant? You... Am I your servant? Yeah. Do I look like your servant? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next in. Socialite Meg Matthews and footballer Jermaine Genus. I think I'm going to be made. You don't look like you're going to be made. No. Good morning. Well, I've got a funny feeling that now that I've seen you, we're the help. Yes. That we're the help. We are the help. Yeah. Oh, I can stop behaving like a lord. Then. <laughs> <laughs> and last to arrive, comedian Chris Ramsey. Oh, I look like an absolute right one. Good morning. Hello. You are all household servants. Yeah. You have a prestigious position within the house. Oh. According to this, we're really respected. Yeah, well, I mean, how could you not respect a man dressed like this? Exactly, we look great. Joining me to watch over the time crashers is social historian and archaeologist Dr Cassie Newland. So you've actually got two sets of servants here. We have, and you'll see that in their outfits as well. These guys are definitely household staff. I think you look very smart. Well, thank you very much. That's their livery, the clothing that's provided for them by the lord or, or the noble. The better dressed your servants are, the more respect you get. Compared to the lowly kitchen staff, household staff are higher up the pecking order. They are the personal attendants of the mistress and the master, and they're normally from very good families, high status. <laughs> Maids, grooms, oh, attend upon me here. Maids. We are maids. I am the steward of this house and steward of the estates. He's in charge of household management, if you like, so he's basically going to organise them now and they're supposed to be deferential to him. To work as a household servant is a great honour. It is important that you behave with due respect and decorum at all times. Follow me. Quick. Keep up. The head cook and the head steward will be watching the time crashers every move to see who does well and who does badly. If they're successful, then they'll be rewarded in the way that they would have been in 1588. If they're not, then they'll receive a fitting punishment. For Fern, Kirsty, and Zoe, that means doing what they're told, no matter how unpleasant. I need Boris here peeled. That means stripping the boar's face from its skull. I want the meat out in one piece, just leave the skin. And then you get to stuff it. it smells lovely, doesn't he? Weightlifter Zoe Smith is one of the strongest women in Britain. I've never been a quitter. I, I don't like to fail. So I'm just gonna kind of like put a brave face on this, I think, and just like throw myself in at the deep end and get stuck in. Absolutely sick to my stomach. You're going to have to man up, get your hands in there. As Zoe's finding out, this is not a job for the squeamish. It's all right. 
We can do this between us, you know that? I'm so freaked out. You're freaked out. I'm so freaked out. Quick, quick. Sorry. While the kitchen staff struggle with their duties, household servants Louise and Meg have a much more privileged task. Do you know how to wash clothes? They're entrusted with washing the lady of the manor's nightgowns. If I, if I may... You have a soaking vat? Yes, it seems that that... Is that water dirty? I think it might have something in it. That's not water. <laughs> what was that? That smells <laughs> of urine. Oh, does it? Yeah. Do they wash in urine? Oh. In a time before washing powder, people used human urine instead. <laughs> And the older, the better. Oh, Old urine contains ammonia, a powerful stain remover still used in household cleaners today. It's not like we're rinsing out the smell, is it? No! And the Elizabethan obsession with we didn't end there. Urine was also recommended for cleaning battle wounds and even for washing your face. The urine has just got, got me. For socialite Meg, this is a world away from life in the 21st century. That's, that's not clean, is it? At all. I have a cleaner, so I don't clean. I have a chef, so I don't cook. I have a dog walker, so I don't even walk my dog. I'm using muscles in my body that I've never used before, and it's quite strenuous. <laughs> so far, I think it's a pile of poo. <laughs> Having women as domestic servants was a pretty new thing, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's very much a 1580s thing. You've got this growing gentry class who are building big posh houses and there's this massive demand for servants, so they are employing women for the first time. They're very much in menial roles. They're earning about 70p a day in modern money. And because the gentry don't want to be seen to be employing cheap female labour, they're all sort of hidden away in kitchens and sculleries. In the kitchen... OK, don't look. Sit down. Fern and Zoe are struggling with the boar's head. That's it, don't look. I feel awful. Just, just stay where you are. Do you want some water? It may look gross, but this was the caviar of its day, as only high-status Elizabethans were legally allowed to hunt and kill wild boar, making it the centrepiece for tomorrow's feast. But in the bizarre world of Elizabethan food, defleshing the head is just the start. Zoe and Fern have to keep the boar's skin intact and stuff it with sausage meat. Just, just don't know if I can do it. That is, oh, that's horrific. Just think of it as an ordinary bit of chicken. I hate this time period. Like, why this job? <laughs> I have a hard time at home, like, getting like a chicken breast out of the packet. I'm genuinely considering becoming a vegetarian. This is horrible. It's 1588, and the time crashers are Elizabethan servants preparing a hundred dishes for a grand feast in a day's time. We leave the eyeballs in the head. Yes, and we sew round it later. Lord. Hollywood actress Kirsty Alley has stepped in to help TV presenter Fern Britton skin a boar's head. This is grim. I would love tea to be invented for servants right now the second, because I really, really need one. Exactly. Probably laced with a little scotch. <laughs> Man alive! Fantastic job. I am so delighted that I managed to do it. His snout looked like our black Labrador snout, and I kept thinking, oh, um, this is the dog. You are awesome. The feast will take place in the Great Hall. For the master of the house, this was his public theatre, where he entertained his guests and showed off his wealth. Only the high-status household servants would have been trusted with the privilege of preparing it. It would have been strictly out of bounds for the menial kitchen staff. So are we like, we're employees, we're not like slaves, are we? No, not at all. But that doesn't mean household staff Chris, Keith and Jermaine don't have to get their hands dirty. We're in a very privileged position. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it, does yeah, it? Not right now, it don't. With the arrival of the Lord and Lady of the Manor imminent... Form up. Women behind. Men. Form a line of three. The Master Steward delivers a crash course in Elizabethan etiquette. Grace, decorum. You are honourable servants. Quite right. 
But comedian Chris Ramsey hasn't got the hang of deference. Your loudness is not behaving with grace within the hall. Control your face. Don't look directly at me. Don't look around. Control it. Servants were expected to be expressionless in front of their superiors at all times. Don't look up too much, don't look too proud. Keep your eyes straight. Do not smile at anything. The Elizabethans thought that looking at someone suggested arrogance. Just sniffing indicated malice. Control the face. Control it. I just think he doesn't like me face. I don't think there's anything I can do with me face that's going to please that man. <laughs> The household staff have got a heck of a lot to learn about etiquette, haven't they? But actually, it's all written down. There were Elizabethan etiquette books which tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. But they're pretty weird. Have you read some of them? Like, there's one about um, advice to remove your hat whilst urinating, even in the company of animals. Do you think the Lord will say thank you when he gets here? The time crashers can't afford to put a foot wrong in front of the Lord and Lady of the Manor. Master Stuart, Master Stuart, my Lord has entered the estate. Ready yourselves. Ready yourselves. What are you doing? Turn around. Turn around. What? Are you insane? I don't think you should have his back to. Yeah, you're right, come on. But there might be some rule where. How dare you look at our Lord before he looks at you? Yes, that way, come on. <laughs> I've seen these fellas uh, in the way. Let us both pass them, my love. Let's move past them. Survey my hall. Come, my sweet. Why did you place yourselves in the center of the hall so the master could not get past? You just stood there. You should be at the back, you should be out the way. This is their hall, they needed to walk through it. The time crashers are used to being the centre of attention. But in 1588, it's those of the highest social standing who should be given the limelight. In the kitchen, work for the big feast continues. Stitch up his nostrils. And Fern and Kirsty's Elizabethan boar skinning has just got even more bizarre. And the mouth, all the way around the mouth. Yeah. Otherwise, if you don't sew up the holes, as it cooks, it will shrink and all the sausage meat will come out its nose like a big sausage snot. Lovely. <laughs> OK. God's sake. Uh, hey, hey. But the boar's thick skin is incredibly tough. Maybe I have the wrong angle or something. There's your tits going. Oh! OK, I've broken the needle. They've broken the only needle in the house strong enough for the job. <sighs> My reputation is based on what comes out of this kitchen. It's not going to work. Scrap it. After all their hard work, stuffed boar's head is off the menu. I really feel now, having been on such a high, that we you know, got the blinking skull out, and now at the last hurdle, can't do it. And the poor people who were failing, as I'm failing now, they'd be kicked out on their asses. <sighs> With the boar centrepiece in ruins, it's up to long jumper Greg. Oh, here we go. Here he comes. And actor Charlie to create some Elizabethan theatre. <laughs> this is what I want you to prepare. Right. We're taking butchery and turning it into art. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Hang on a minute. They've stuffed the duck into the pig. Why? Half goose, half pig. This is a cock and trice the height of Elizabethan culinary humour. These will be the centrepieces for the feast. There is no room for error here. I mean, should I just cut down and cut it in half? Oh, man. I might have to snap this, you know. Hang on, I'm through. Tudors were complete nutters when it came to food. And the oh. fact that they... They put them on the table as a centrepiece, like it's something yeah. beautiful to look at. It's, it's really bizarre to me. Upstairs, the male household servants have been sent to prepare their master's bedchamber. He hasn't even got plugs next to his bed to charge his phone, man. <laughs> Rubbish. The Elizabethans believed that bad smells spread diseases. Scattering sweet-smelling rose petals isn't decorative, 
It was the official advice of the College of Physicians for warding off the dreaded plague. It smells lovely. Warm his bed is the only other thing you can do. Uh, and when, when you say warm no, no, his no. bed... Uh, Master Stewart, how do we warm his bed? It's not weird at all, this, is it? Warm his bed! This bloke is so rich, he's got people to warm his bed for him. I didn't realise bed warming was a job. It's a hard life, isn't it? I'd like to bring it back and maybe do it professionally, because it's a good job. <laughs> Best thing I've done so far. Having already washed her nightwear, Meg and Louise are getting their mistress ready for bed. Cleaning her hands, face and feet with scented water. For socialite Meg, it's a revelation. I think I've got quite into being the servant now. To wash someone's feet, you might think it's a bit degrading or could be a little bit weird, but it wasn't actually. It felt quite soothing. I wasn't really put out by it. I think that's all for this evening. While the front of house staff are done for the day, there's still hours of work ahead for the kitchen hands. I can't you stand the way this smells. If the feast is to be ready in time. I don't mind saying I'm getting a little bit pissed off. <laughs> in this period of time, people just were on a hamster wheel. It was just endless. And we're going round and round in circles. There's just no time to actually sit down and go, Phew. we're full on, full on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We made ten pies. This is hard. <laughs> There's always that opening for hookers in town, which I'm highly considering. Figure I can tips, I can make way more than I'm making here, and all I have to do is pour beer and show my breasts. I've got no idea what I'm doing. Actor Charlie is struggling to sew up his cock and trice. Oh, man. You right? This is so difficult. But Olympian Greg has a sportsman's determination to do a perfect job. I think this is where it was killed, there. Right, so what I'm going to try and do is cover that as well. Sewing the front end of a pig onto the back end of a goose. I'm very impressed. How am I? I a job as a seamstress. It's a welcome success after a difficult day in the kitchen. Right, do you know what? I know this is weird and a bit sick, but I'm quite proud of that. Uh, my day so far has been full of highs and lows. For the household staff, it's time for a meal in front of one of the few fires in the house. I think we're all agreed it's hard work. It's hard work. Yeah, it's hard work, yeah. And I don't find any of it demeaning. No. no. It feels very comfortable because you are so clear what your position mm. is. It's so defined. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Kirsty and Zoe, where have they been all day? In the kitchen. Working really hard. Yeah. Cooking all day. Right, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is the feast day and it's going to be an early start and full on. So, I would advise you to get your heads down as quick as you can. Gentlemen, you will be sleeping in there. Ladies, <laughs> you're sleeping in the left-hand side. Hell no. I didn't think I was a diva, but I am. Um... I'll take that. Kitchen servants slept where they worked, with only straw-filled sacks between them and the cold stone floor. So this, at the end of the day, takes the last bit of air out of you. If I was a balloon, I'd just be on the floor. Things aren't much more comfortable for Louise and Meg. Oh, my goodness. Is this really where we're going to sleep? Yeah. It's absolutely freezing. The household staff bed down outside their master's rooms, in case they're needed during the night. I could just go to sleep now. So could I just go to sleep? I'm <laughs> so tired. I don't I think I'll sleep anywhere. <sighs> We're so tired after today that we might just collapse. That's what I'm hoping anyway, that I, I'm so tired I don't even notice how uncomfortable I am.
but sleep doesn't come easy. Thanks to Fern. It's dawn. The time crashers have had just a few hours of broken sleep. Right, come on, ladies, time to go. Most of the wind's really bad, doesn't it? Well, you can tell me the truth. No, I don't want to say. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen. Up, dressed, pretty damn quick. You got a big feast today. A lot of roasting to do. So we need to get the fires up to temperature right. as soon as we possibly can. Right, here goes. Oh. There's a big feast today. I think we should get the horses and leave. <laughs> Gotta be a carriage around there somewhere. It was literally freezing. You couldn't get warm and we had blankets all over us. It was hideous. It was just cold. Okay, stop. Have a sniff. What's that? Beer. This is why we work here. <laughs> In an age when clean water was hard to come by, Elizabethans instead drank what was known as small beer. It contains 2% alcohol. It is good. And servants like Fern and Kirsty would have knocked back up to eight pints a day. Warm beer and lemon is the thing. Let me taste it. Mm. I think you'll find it's absolutely a taste sensation. It'll be a better day. Breakfast for the kitchen servants is the standard grub of the Elizabethan poor, peas pottage. Not good. A measly mix of peas and water. I don't think I can eat any more of that. No. Meat would have been too expensive to waste on kitchen servants. Right, you lot. We've got bacon eggs ready for the household staff. But the household staff get a fry up. Oh, you're having a laugh. Yeah, if I were you, I just would look at it. Oh, you're kidding me. <sighs> That's not for us. Yes, yeah, for you. No way. I'd like a fat piece if it's possible. Oh, yes. It's delicious. Look at those eggs. They look so good. Oh, yeah. Bacon's amazing as well. It just slaps you in the face, this level of hierarchy. They get nicer food and a nicer life in general. Oh. It's definitely much harder being us. <laughs> While the higher status time crashers tuck in... Oh, sorry, mate. ..the kitchen servants must crack on with preparing the feast. Ah, oh, there you go. Right, you get... Oh, oh it's got the tail in the face. Ah, fantastic. Here we go. Go this way. For Olympian long jumper Greg and actor Charlie, it's time to start spit-roasting the meat. On the menu, two cockatrices, 20 chickens, a peacock... Oh, I'll give you a hand as well. 25 kilos of beef and mutton and two deers worth of venison. Nice. All for just 20 guests. Do you reckon one down from the top? Yeah, why not? Yeah. A flock of sheep cost more than the average townhouse in Elizabethan times, so all this flesh is just another way for the lord of the manor to show off how rich he is. How's that? We seem to be getting the worst of everything, the worst bedding, the worst food, um, the worst jobs, in my opinion. <laughs> You really are the lowest of the low. I've just seen the other guys and they're complaining about laying the table. Well, frankly, I would swap with them in a heartbeat. Yeah. In the Great Hall, the household servants are hard at work. I'll tell you what, I want to eat off that. Polishing the plates. <laughs> what was that? In the Elizabethan world, Everything had a status attached to it, even the furniture. Absolutely love that carpet. It's starting to do me head in that I don't know why they're bowing. When entering the hall, servants were expected to bow to the top table and the tapestry behind it, whether their master was sitting there or not. Where's the loud fellow? Loud fellow? Hello, Comedian sir. Chris's confusion hasn't gone down well. I hear you've been failing to pay courtesy to our Lord's board. Oh. I fear that Chris won't be able to control not only his face, but his deportment during the service. Chris cannot resist, but play the fool. He must suppress that. He must control himself. Keep your front foot straighter if you can. Lower if you can. If you could stick your rump out a little less, that might be, that might be better. <coughs> and hold. You're trembling. Got 
bad knee, mate. That's what. Have you? Yeah, so have I. <laughs> Killing me. Left leg would be easier. I don't know whether it's it's the mark of your deference, how low you can bend, but we might be in trouble. You do this every time you come in the hall. Chris, Jermaine and Keith will have to limber up. On a busy day, a household servant could bow up to 200 times. Satisfactory for the moment? I mean, this incessant bowing and protocol... <sighs> just scrambles your head. Out in the yard, the roasting of the meat is behind schedule. Gentlemen, why on earth is this not in front of the fire already? It should have been done. Get it on. Get moving. Now. To speed up the cooking, Greg and Charlie place the precious cock and trices as close as possible to the fire. I think he's getting frustrated because the banquet is coming and obviously the food's not ready. And I understand it's all resting on his shoulders. You feel practically worthless and all you're doing is just surviving to serve somebody else. You're getting those chickens! <sighs> and you could be a potentially brilliant mind, but it would have never been discovered. You could have been physically fantastic, but nobody would have ever known, because ultimately, if you were set to, from birth to work in a kitchen, you worked in a kitchen. Right. The kitchen hands are all under pressure. Part of the feast for my lord will be a banquet course, which will involve sugar work, very special. The sugar needs to be broken and ground. Right, I'm just going to go, like, full sledgehammer on it now. The sugar course will form the highlight of the feast. It's exhausting. And sugar was yet another way to display wealth. Just one of the sugar cones that Zoe, Fern and Kirsty are pounding would have cost two months of their wages. The nation would have to wait another 150 years before it got cheap and plentiful sugar when Britain established the West Indian plantations, which relied on the back-breaking work of thousands of slaves. Back in 1588, it's still the height of luxury, and yet another food that can be turned into art. I'm making fried eggs. Yes. To go with the bacon. Yes. Kirsty and Fern have ground the sugar with almonds to make an Elizabethan favourite, marzipan. That's a pretty colour for this. It's a very nice colour. I'm enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm in my element, but it's clearly the best thing that I've been able to do. These are little mice eating cheese. It's a little beady-eyed mouse. Very impressed, ladies. Really? You obviously found your niche in life. The feast is just one hour away. Greg, that one looks like it's coming apart. Uh, what, which one? The one at the other end. What, cock and tries? Yeah, you look at the bottom. Oh, no, it's split. Greg and Charlie have put the cock and trice too close to the flames. I'm absolutely dead, like, genuinely gutted. This has spent so long sewing that thing as well. Last week we've had an absolute nightmare. It's got a little bit too hot and burnt and it's fallen apart. I am concerned, very concerned that this is just not going to happen. We would need a staff of about 80 to pull this off. Attend on me. Attend on me for a moment. It's not only the kitchen who are short of staff. Obviously, women cannot serve at table. It would be demeaning. So you two down to the kitchen. Go and see if there's any tasks you can do as menial servants. Your reverence, please. Away. Continue your practice. So we're not even allowed to serve? No. A feast had to be served by men. Show me your hands. We are very, very low on household staff. You two are to serve at table. Okay. Go and wash your hands, you'll be supplied with a livery. Go, go, now. Right, come in. <laughs> oh, my God. These two scullions have been promoted to household staff. You will need to teach them what we have taught you quickly. For Greg and Charlie, life is on the up. Well, these are much better. Lovely job. Score. Cool. With the feast looming, Keith and Chris finish laying the table. Left foot forward. Footballer Jermaine forward. has next to no time to bring the new recruits up Come to speed. Turn to your right. 
Turn around. Which way do we turn? To your right. Then? Always to your right. Always to your right. Every time you go into the room, you've got to bow three yeah. times. I've been complaining about them, saying, God, oh, they've got it easy in there, but now I would so much anything. rather be out yeah. here. I mean, it's like, it's, it's nonsense. What we were doing, well, it seemed to have a purpose. What they're doing has no purpose. No, none whatsoever. It's a waste it's of time. Pomp. The guests are starting to arrive. It's the moment of truth for the time crashers. Herbs, flowers, quick. The first conveyance of dishes to the Lord's table will encompass a very large peacock. Peacock, cockatrice, cockatrice. No, peacock, cockatrices. Go. Top table, yeah? Those two are going to top table. All right. I am really, really nervous. I'm going to try and control my face. I can't promise I won't laugh. It's just a nerves thing. I will just laugh. Okay. And then Use back. your legs. It's not just your, you're not just bending your upper body. You're proffering it like that. It just looks good. In the kitchen, the meat is only just ready. Right, come on, ladies. It's a scramble to plate up and hide the damage to Greg's cock and trice. Today is an incredibly important day. It is important to the status of our master. They must get it right. Master Steward, we're ready to receive my Lord's honoured guests. Let us begin. The Lord and Lady of the Manor enter the Great Hall. My Lord! My Lord! My Lord! Worthy guests, honoured friends, pray be seated. The guests take their seats. They are ready for the feast. Where's the food? There's just one thing missing. They're waiting for it. Where's the food? It's coming! I don't shout. The ten time crashers have spent two tough days preparing for a grand Elizabethan feast. Everyone's now seated, with the most important guests closest to the Lord, but the food is nowhere to be seen. So what goes first? Peacock. For the lowly kitchen staff, the hard work is done. And then cock and trice. It's time to hand over to the household staff. According to Elizabethan dining etiquette, every dish has its place. These two are top table. The time crashers have to deliver the most expensive and extravagant dishes to the top table and the inferior food increasingly further away to the lower status guests. Not only that, but every dish has to be placed with complete symmetry and they must bow three times with every dish they deliver. All 100 of them. How are we even going to bow with that? Just, just, just lead you up. The show-stopping dishes must be served first. Chris, Jermaine and Keith take the lead with the peacock. My lord, before you, a great peacock. Bringing up the rear, Greg and Charlie with their cock and trices. Forward, forward, forward. Peacock takes most of the room. Shut up. What's next? We want the two big haunches. Pigs and peacocks may be allowed into the great hall. Stop at the top and wait. Well done, boys. But female servants can't go beyond the kitchen door. So success or failure now rests entirely with the male servants. My lord, for your honoured guests, capons and haunches. And no guest can eat a mouthful until every single dish is out. Mutton pies. There's more food, there's more food. Sweet pies. Next, two custards. Top table custards, thank you. There's hardly any room on the table. Custards. I mean, all that bowing is absolutely killing my knees. You just get going out and get going. We keep going out and bow. My lord, sundry pies from your ovens. My lord, diverse salads. It was all going really well. We have to move some things around. And then more and more food kept coming out, and there was nowhere to put it. Space in the corner. Cheese top. Cheese top. With the food coming thick and fast. What's this big one for? Where's that going? The plan for perfect Elizabethan symmetry goes out the window. One table got like 10 pies, and then another table just got meat. It was like Desperate Dan's table, there was just bones and flesh everywhere. I 
apple tart. But they're puddings. In the Elizabethan world, enough was never enough. It's beef. There cannot be any more. <laughs> Go away. I have never seen so much food. So much food. <laughs> <laughs> and still the food kept coming out. I just kept laughing. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> there may be chaos behind the scenes, but at the feast, it's essential to keep a straight face. Game face, game face. Quick, game oh, face. Bad thoughts, bad thoughts. Quick one. You're going to lose your job. In a world where just sniffing is an insult, a servant laughing would be beyond the pale. <laughs> Spears, my lord. After 30 intense minutes, all 100 dishes are out and the eating can begin. What's most the point about all this food? They haven't over-ordered like we might do at a Chinese restaurant. It's not just about volume, even though there is a lot of it. It's about where everything comes from. It's spices from Asia, it's citrus from the Mediterranean. It's hard to get hold of things. This is power visualised. It's designed to show what kind of standing you have. Did you hear that? But there's still room for yet more Elizabethan theatre. In there. Hello. We've got a few of our friends. <laughs> Master Server, <laughs> you will attend upon my lord and break open the two pies which are before him. Live frog pies were the Elizabethans' idea of a joke. It falls to Chris to handle any escapees with calm dignity. <laughs> the main feast is over. God save you all. God save you. But the eating doesn't stop. The Lord and a few chosen guests leave to enjoy a very special treat. The exclusive sugar banquet, courtesy of Fern and Kirsty. What you're going to see next is the most conspicuous bit of consumption ever. So this is your beautifully sculpted marzipan and your sugar fancies. This is very exclusive. Only the chosen few get to go and have the sugar course. Because it's so expensive, it's like opening your bottle of best brandy for your VIPs. This love affair with sugar meant that the Elizabethan elite had notoriously rotten teeth. One teeth whitening treatment of the day was gargling with spirit of vitriol, that's sulfuric acid. <laughs> the time crashers' work is over. Time for the women to find out if they'll be rewarded or roasted for their efforts. Cheese tart. <laughs> I fought hard to get that. You did fantastically well. Oh. Your reward for doing so well. You get the ends of my Lord's candles. Oh, it's nice. not much after all the work you've done. It may not seem much of a bonus, but a beeswax candle would have cost an entire day's wages for the kitchen staff. Thank you very much. Without you, it couldn't have happened. Very impressed. Mm -hmm. My time in 1588 has taught me to never go back to this period in time. To me, it just feels like the only thing reminiscent of this in the United States was slavery. I thought it would be romantic and chivalrous. It's not. It's filthy. It's smelly. It is sheer hard work. In the Great Hall... You're right, King. ..the household staff are completely wrung out. Attend upon me. Oh. Will it never end? <laughs> well done. You did a superb job. I was amazed and delighted. I must admit, when you came in yesterday, I didn't have much hope for it. <laughs> in fact, even about an hour before, I didn't have much hope. <laughs> Chris, I was particularly impressed by you. You're a man who obviously has difficulties controlling himself. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you went away able to control your face. Well done. Warm yourself by the fire and stuff your faces. Thank you. Very nice. And I shall give you a final bow from me. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> 
Scraping through someone's leftovers may not seem like much of a reward. Oh, yeah. But for the serving staff, it would have been one of the few perks of the job. Cheers. Cheers. People in the 21st century spend a lot of time having fun and filling their lives with stuff. Whereas it seems to me in this period, <laughs> there's no time for that. It's work. You are born to work. I tell you what, I haven't worked that hard for a long time, like... Ever. Got... Try ever. It's been hard. Really hard. And I feel embarrassed to sit here and say, oh, it's hard, because I can only imagine what the people of 1588 was going through. Yeah, it must have been really tough. You're just not allowed to be happy? Because I can't even smile up there. What kind of life is that? Not one I want to live, that's for sure. <laughs> The Time Crashers have come to the end of their stay in 1588, and although at times it seemed unlikely, they've managed to pull off a grand piece of Elizabethan culinary theatre. But it's been two days of sweat and toil. From the minefield of Elizabethan etiquette to the heat of the kitchen, our Time Crashers have learned that in 1588, status was everything. And we've seen the birth of domestic service as we know it. The butlers, footmen and maids who for centuries to come would serve our nation's wealthy.